So I would now like to introduce our student speaker, who is Miku Yamada. Uh, Miku <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, you can, you can judge what her fellow classmates think of Miku. She came to Stanford. She came to Stanford from the uh, uh, Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where she served uh, in the Japan-U.S. Security Treaty Division for two years, working on a wide range of issues concerning uh, Japan's security cooperation with the United States. Uh, she's done extraordinarily well at Stanford. She's in, been involved in many different uh, activities. She's been a research assistant for General H.R. McMaster, uh, Professor Kenji Kushida, the Digital Civil Society Lab, and she was also elected president of the International Policy Students Association. Uh, and as I just said, she was nominated to be our class speaker this year. So Miku, please come up and we look forward to hearing you. Dear esteemed professors and faculty, distinguished guests, parents, families, and friends from all over the world, welcome to the graduation ceremony of the MIT class of 2023. Dear class of 2023, we made it. <laughs> I am so honored to be here today to celebrate the achievements of this wonderful group of people I am so proud to be a part of. We are a small but extremely diverse and dynamic group. For some of us, Stanford is a drive away from home, and for others, it is a 15-hour flight. We come from 15 countries and from a broad range of experiences and expertise. To name just a few, Kyle and Brian come from years of service in the U.S. military. Ben, <laughs> and Ajana came from successfully running their companies. Mizin, Will, and I came from working on national security and foreign policy in our governments. It is a miracle that we all decided to go to grad school, even amid the pandemic, and gathered here from all over the world. Each and every one of us made this journey as special as it was. And behind all of us are our friends, families, and mentors without whom we would not be here. I would especially like to thank my family for always believing in me, and for my mom for traveling all the way from Japan to celebrate this time with me. I also want to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude for the people who made all of this possible, the FSI and MIP staff. Ambassador McFall, for always inspiring us to create impact through our actions and to value this community. Professor Fukuyama for his wonderful leadership and for making sure we know the MIP problem solving framework <laughs> like the back of our hand. Shinira for not only being the best global economy professor, but for being the backbone of our program and our cheerleader. Jonathan, Neva, Megan, Patrick, Chan, and Lale for all that you do. Thank you so, so much. At Stanford, this MIP cohort quickly became a, my family. We became a family not only because we had classes every single day together for the first quarter, but because despite all of our differences, we shared a collective desire to make this world, with all of its imperfections and inequalities, a better place for all to live in. When I think back to the first quarter, most of my memories are in the MIP quarter or in one of the study rooms in the, hall, in the dorms, either trying to flip a probability tree or struggling to figure out how to calculate the balance of payments. <laughs> However, these memories are now fond memories because throughout all those grueling work sessions, I developed a support system that carried me throughout my Stanford experience. While I learned a great deal from all the classes I took, I learned equally as much, if not more, from my classmates. At the Friday discussions hosted by Time War, we exchanged opinions on a broad range of topics, from cryptocurrency to critical race theory, encouraging us to look at these issues from multiple lenses. We challenged our assumptions 
and together we boldly envisioned what we could do once we stepped out of our comfort zones. It was these discussions that inspired me to take classes I would not have taken otherwise, from energy to tech platform policy. Here, we mastered our specializations and delved into new interests. Some of us, like Tommy and Daniel, started out focusing on issues in development and governance, but fell in love with the exciting intersection that is technology and policy. Angela immersed herself in the eco innovation ecosystem here at Stanford as the first non-STEM Thrust Venture Fellow. Munashe and Logan took the opportunity to travel to Vienna to broaden their perspectives on policy issues. Omar and Karina pursued their passions in space policy and food systems, unearthing amazing opportunities. Not only were these two years a time of learning, many of us dedicated our time to creating social impact. Arden's work on helping resettle high-risk Afghan refugees and Francesca's work with the Stanford Jail and Prison Education Project are two prime examples of this. Chiro was awarded the Stanford Impact Founder Fellowship to build human capital for climate adaptive farms in sub-Saharan Africa. The 20 plus units of cyber policy electives did not seem to be enough for Caroline and Hillary, and so they dedicated their time outside of class to tackle online safety issues at the Stanford Internet Observatory. Throughout our journey, we experienced many joyous moments, which we all celebrated together. We welcome Brian's beautiful daughter, Lena. <laughs> Joyce hosted us to celebrate the Lunar New Year, where we welcome the Year of the Tiger and then the Year of the Rabbit. I will never forget listening to Justine read us this beautiful poem and the harmonies of Ben, Caroline, and, and Karina amid the flickering flames at Campfire Night. Together, we cheered on as Rosie performed at the Stanford Law School musical two years in a row, even as an expecting mom. I had the pleasure of, we traveled all around the world for our capstone project. And per, I personally had the pleasure of watching Omar and Jonathan fall in love with the food in Tokyo and Hanoi, <laughs> and especially the wonder that is Japanese 7-Elevens. <laughs> <laughs> Together, we celebrated the 40th anniversary of the IPS MIT program with our inspiring alumni. However, these past two years have not always been easy. While grad school is an immensely rewarding time, it is also a challenging time. It is a challenging time because it is a time of uncertainty and it is difficult to measure how much we have grown. It is difficult because we are constantly grappling with questions which there are no answers to. Many of us have suffered personal losses and wished we could have been closer to home. For policy students, it is especially devastating to see our ideals being, disru being disrupted by anger, fear, and greed. We watched in horror and disbelief as Russia invaded Ukraine, and millions of innocent civilians lost their lives. We saw COVID-19 continuing its rampage, impacting people and communities dear to us. Even so, we made it through. We supported each other throughout the lows. Here, I was constantly surrounded by friends who gave me more love and kindness than I could ever return. I was constantly surprised at how beautiful and powerful it is when we choose to be selfless and we choose to empower others. Now, it is time for us to embark on our separate journeys. Some of us, Chuping, Joyce, Suman, Anna, and Louise, will continue their inter interdisciplinary learning here at Stanford. Others, like Jonathan and Ben, baby Ben this time, <laughs> will start their careers applying their policy skills and consulting. <coughs> Yet others, including myself, will work in government to develop policies from the public sector. We will continue to face challenges. As we learn from the problem-solving framework, making changes is not an easy task, and it is not something we can just do on our own. It takes time and hard work, but now we are equipped with the tools we need 
and a community of caring and inspiring leaders all over the world. The single most important lesson I have learned at Stanford is to truly care about the problems you are trying to solve and to approach them with love. Sometimes it can seem easier not to care when caring too much about things that never seem to get better can break your heart. Sometimes it is difficult to love when the things we love are being hurt. Still, I hope we have the strength. Thank you. Still, I hope we have the strength to always choose empathy and always choose love. When we believe in a cause and really love a community, we can make an impact larger and deeper than we could ever imagine. Knowing each and every one of you, I am confident that we are ready to go out and tackle even the most difficult obstacles with compassion, hope, and love. I want to end by sharing one of my favorite Japanese phrases, Ichigo Ichie. It roughly transfers, translates into one chance in a lifetime and means that we should treasure each moment and each encounter because no moment is repeatable. Let us cherish all the encounters we make in our lives. Let us never take a moment or an opportunity for granted. I especially hope that we will all look back at this moment as a time of joy and gratitude. Now, please join me in congratulating the graduates of the MIT class of 2023.